Hello guys and guys, and welcome back to another After Effects tutorial here on Tuesday. Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be looking at how to make an overlay intro for your YouTube videos or um, any videos alike. It doesn't have to be YouTube, but uh, pretty much what an overlay intro is uh, pretty much what you saw at the beginning of this video. It's an intro that goes over top of your regular video that kind of has a transparent background, but yet it shows all the normal elements of an intro, such as your title, animations of whatever you want, and um, that whole dealio. So pretty much it's the same as a regular intro, but the background is transparent and you can put it on top of your regular video, giving that nice professional um, different look than you would see from most channels on uh, the internet or YouTube. So pretty much how this is achieved is um, by creating an intro with a, uh, a transparent background in a program such as Adobe After Effects, which I'm going to be showing you how to do today and uh, taking that outro and uh, keeping those transparent pixels um, where they are and then using it in an editing program that supports transparent video. Uh, to put it on a layer on top of your regular video, uh, thus putting it on top of your video and creating that nice overlay effect. So I'm going to be breaking down how to do this for yourself. Pretty much what you want to do is have um, a compositing software such as Adobe After Effects and also, like I said, a video editing program such as Premiere Pro or uh, Sony Vegas or you could even use After Effects if you want to render out your entire videos in After Effects. Um, just as long as it supports multiple layers and you can go ahead and put stuff on top of each other and, um, you know, put layers on top of each other and stuff like that. So I'm going to show you how to do it inside of Premiere Pro and Sony Vegas. You can use your imagination for whatever editor you have as long as it supports multiple layers with transparent video. But um, it should be the same if you're using After Effects. So pretty much what you're going to want to do is set up a new composition. I have gone ahead and created my composition. I always name it main comp. That's just popular habit. And I've made the width 1920, height 1080, um, 1080p there. And I've gone ahead and done 60 FPS because now YouTube supports it. Might as well go with the trend. And uh, resolution you can do, uh, this is just a preview resolution. So I'm going to go ahead and go to full. And uh, 50 seconds, 15 seconds, um, your intro shouldn't be any longer than that anyway, so that should be plenty of space to do what we need to do. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and draw, drag in my logo here. Um, it's uh, really high res, you'll see it took up quite a bit of space there. Um, but uh, I showed how to make this in another tutorial called uh, Fancy Text Tutorial. Um, you can look on my channel for it or search YouTube for it. I'm pretty sure it will be one of the top results if you search for fancy text in Photoshop. Uh, you can also do it in After Effects, but that's uh, that's another video <laughs> tutorial that I've made. I know I've made a lot of tutorials and stuff, so um, you should be able to find out how to do text that looks like this. I think I used the font M-O-L-O-T, Molot. You can uh, search the font.com for it. But anyways, we got our logo here and basically I'm going to make it do some uh, simple animation. I've done a keyframe tutorial so <laughs> I'm just going to be plugging all these tutorials because I don't want to go into depth on uh, most of this basic stuff because I've already done tutorials on them. So pretty much with the uh, logo animation I'm going to do the same thing as I did with my uh, bounce to text tutorial. So uh, pretty much I'm going to be using the scale parameter so if I press S on my keyboard it'll bring up the scale. Um, little property right here and you can go ahead and start keyframing that. I'm going to go to just a little bit in. I don't want to start right away. So I'm going to click scale right here. That'll give me my 18.3. Um, I'm just going to keep that number in my head because that's uh, this is the size I want it to end up at. When it's done doing its uh, transition in, this is the size I want it to be. So I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm just going to move this keyframe over here just for later use because that's the 18.3 I want. Um, but right now when I want to start, I want to start with a really high scale because I want it to come in and bounce in, you know. So I'm just going to go until I start to see it coming in right about there. About 1,000, something like that. Anyways, I'm going to go about 15 frames ahead. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I, hold it, I held shift and page down to go 10 ahead. And then I just pressed page down five more times uh, without shift. And it did five individual frames ahead. So from here, I'm going to... Uh, my target is 18, so I'm going to go one less than that. I'm going to about 17. And then I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to go a little bit above where my target is, which is 18, so I'm going to go to 19. It's one above. And 1, 2, 3, 4. 
and then I'm gonna go to my final destination <laughs> and uh, we have our target um, sort of size there. So let's go ahead and preview it. There we go, we got that nice bounce in. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me full screen it by holding tilde, by pressing tilde on my keyboard. Um, and there we go. We have our stuff bouncing in, looks real dandy. All right, so from here, we can actually start to animate other things. Uh, I'm just gonna do something real quick. You'll notice in these uh, beginning frames here, it is still blocking the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and click there on my layer. I'm gonna press Alt and then open bracket and that will cut it to start right there. So you won't see anything until it shows up right there. Um, and I'm also going to um, bring the uh, scale up just a little bit, up just a little bit. I want it to start pretty wide out there. So if we preview this, you'll notice that there's a whole section where it, it doesn't really look like it's doing anything. It just results in like a orange screen for a little bit. So it actually starts to see change right about here. So I'm actually going to trim it. Start right there by holding alt bracket and you'll see that it just boom pops in. Looks kind of cool. Now, uh, if you want, I'm going to actually do this a little bit forward. You can actually uh, click here and then click on the motion blur tab right here and then enable your composition and see, it looks clear. Everything does. It's uh, it's the go to to uh, make everything look better when you're working on a video project. Well, it depends on what you're doing, but for the majority of the time, turning on motion blur on all of your layers will just make everything look better. It'll hide up any mistakes that you've made it, uh, along the way. Um, but from here, what we can actually do is start to create our background items. Now, keep in mind that uh, the checkerboard represents what's transparent. So we always want to make sure in an overlay intro that there is this uh, background that's transparent. If you if it just looks black like this, you can actually toggle showing it by hitting this little button down here. Oh, and that was my phone. Sorry about that. Um, you can actually toggle showing it right here. So. We want to keep in mind uh, that we want to have this shown while we're working on an overlay intro because it's very important. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is it's going to be um, hard. Like if if we have maybe a, a video that we're overlaying this on that's inherently orange, this is going to look like it's blending into the video we have down below and it will be hard to see our overlay intro because it's blending in with the video we have behind it. Now to fix that, we'll just create some nice contrast by adding a, a kind of a faded black um, shadow behind it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a black solid, um, make comp size, all that good stuff. And um, I'm going to go ahead and put it underneath so it doesn't block out our logo. And I'm going to size it down to kind of fit just behind where our, uh, our logo is. From here, I'm going to go ahead and use an effect called Fast Blur. Uh, keep in mind, my my, uh, my panels won't be exactly in the same spot yours are. This is a custom layout that I've made to make my workflow just go a little bit faster. So keep in mind that everything that uh, is on my screen may not be in the same exact location that you have on your screen, but um, it'll be there somewhere. And if it's not, you can always see if it's being shown by going to window. And if it's not, you can just click on it and we'll start to show it. Anyways, we can go ahead and uh, use this to... Uh, I'll actually make it a little bit wider and uh, we're gonna bring up the uh, we're gonna bring up the blur just nice and get those really really nice edges now notice how these edges right here they're actually fading as well we don't want oh wrong layer I'm gonna go ahead and uh, scale up the width on this one and I'm just gonna go ahead and keep jacking this up give it a nice kind of blur to it keep it nice and contrasty and uh, looks like we're gonna have to stretch it just a little, tiny bit more. All right, this looks really, really good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up here so we get a nice wider kind of shadow behind it. And uh, there we go. If we put a yellow solid, or sorry, an orange solid behind it to kind of simulate what it would look like if we were on top of a, uh, an orange video to kind of see if it's being blocked out, we'll see that no, it stands out. And without this, you'll notice it, it doesn't really look all that ideal. So it's really important to have it kind of stand out like that. And using this technique, I can also see if it needs some dimming. Um, using the opacity, I just press T, all the layers selected to bring up this property, by the way. And uh, notice you can kind of pinpoint exactly where you think it should be. So I think it should be right about there. That looks about good. 
and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this temporary orange solid because it was just using for uh, testing purposes. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a nice drop, drop shadow to my uh, logo layer. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and bring that up and then bring my uh, distance up. This will just give the, uh, the text itself its own little drop shadow thing. So if I disable transparency on that, you can see it has a, has a kind of nice drop shadow going naturally. Nice little natural drop shadow. I'm gonna go ahead and copy paste this. If I control C, control V, actually that doesn't work. Control D, yeah, control D duplicates it. And uh, I'm gonna bring up the, uh, the softness on the second one a lot more than the first one. That'll kind of give it a little bit more of a nice little clean drop off. So there we go. And uh, you'll notice it has a, like a nice little um, kind of darker halo around where the text is. So with all that out of the way, that is our text. We'll go ahead and press zero. We go over here and press the RAM preview button. You can actually uh, preview how this looks in real time. So that is how it looks. Boom. Boom. I think I always like to play it a few times just to kind of get the feel for it. Boom. All right. Looks really good. I'm going to go ahead and save here. And uh, from this, we can actually work on some other stuff. I know I had axes flying in mine, but um, I don't want to get too in depth on this tutorial. I just want to show you the basics so you can kind of uh, morph and do your own thing off of that. Um, don't copy mine. Uh, use your imagination. There's so much you can do with this, um, even if it's just changing up what this is like you don't have to use an axe you can use something else but um i i, I uh, respect you guys and hope that you will take this tutorial and do your own thing with it instead of directly copying me um but uh basically i just animate the position by going on this layer right here and clicking p basically i just animate the position to start over here keyframe it right there go a little bit forward move it to right here and then I just do the same with the rotation by hitting R on my keyboard while it layer selected, keyframing that property, and uh, go ahead and I just rotate it and uh, do the same on the other side, make them clash in the middle, all the good stuff. Um, may not look good, but with a little bit of tweaking and looking at my keyframe tutorial, you can kind of figure out how I kind of smoothed the motion, did all that good stuff with uh, keyframes and stuff. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I think that this is a good start for you guys and this is pretty much all I'm going to show you because this is the basic overlay intro not how to make an intro so uh yeah this is this is good this is good I really like how this came out even though this was a tutorial and I was just kind of like half butting it <laughs> um, if you get what I'm saying here just to get the idea across but anyways let's get into the good stuff so in order to put this on your on your regular videos as an overlay type out intro sorry about that um ooh, actually we don't have this Oh, this black thing's kind of here the whole time. And we don't really have to... Okay, I'm going to fix that real quick. Um, I'm going to open up the scale right here. We're going to keyframe it. Now, this is where... Oh, I'm going to go to where we want it to be like this. Uh, right about here. Oh, that looks kind of cool. I'm going to keyframe it where it needs to be. And then I'm going to go a little bit before and uh, animate it to where you can't see it. I'm just going to go to zero right there. So you'll see over time it opens up and we get the text going in. So we kind of have that um, nice opening effect. I'm going to make that a little bit faster, moving frames together. Let's we'll see how that looks. Actually, we can have it open up while the text is bumping in, so it's a little bit less noticeable because it's kind of distracting seeing that weird black thing pop for um, to uh, come in. So let's see how this looks by itself now. Um, yeah, it looked good. It looks really good. Um, I'm impressed by my <laughs> tutorial intro making skills here. And about mm, two and a half, three seconds. I mean, you don't want to look at the logo for too long unless you're doing some crazy animation with it. And uh, basically at this point, I did a um, nice transition out block effect with mine. Uh, you can look at my custom transitions tutorial. <laughs> do that. Plug in all these tutorials, man, I, I tell you. Um, but I'm going to add a nice fade just for the sake of keeping this tutorial short. So I'm going to go ahead and open up opacity on both these. I'm going to keyframe right here, move forward, and uh, I'm going to keyframe the opacity to go to zero. And that's how you fade out, ladies and gents. That is how you fade out an intro. I'll go ahead and fade out right there. Noise. All right, so that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, press... Uh, and on my keyboard to end it right there. I'm gonna go to where it starts Right about here. I'm gonna press B on my keyboard to start it right there and I'm gonna right click my my uh, render selection 
trim the trim comp to work area and that's going to trim our composition to just fit our intro real nice and simple all right so now we're out to the rendering and then using it uh, to overlay on our intro as part of the tutorial so uh, let's go ahead and do that all right to render this intro and enable putting it in your videos basically all you have to do is hit Control m with uh, your intro composition open Control m and it'll open it up inside the render queue where you can actually start to render and all that good stuff so pretty much what we're gonna have to do here is basically make sure that it is uh, transparent this is very important because normal video will just replace the transparent pixels with black ones and then you have this like weird black background intro showing where it should be transparent but it's not so basically to do that we have to go to the output module and uh, what we have to do here is select AVI it's currently the only one that supports transparency and we'll go to RGB plus alpha alpha is the transparent channel so that is very important to have otherwise you just have red green blue channels which uh, will make the transparent pixels black but if we have the alpha channel it'll make them transparent um, just a forewarning your video um, render for this intro will be very very huge um, just because the alpha channel um, it, it exports in lossless quality and it is it adds a lot of data to your video intro so um, this video <laughs> will be humongous so make sure you have room on your hard drive um, usually a few seconds can come out to maybe a, a few gigabytes it's kind of insane but uh, just go along with it but format options you don't have much to work with because it is actually lossless um, and if you mess with that it won't be so just make sure that uh, everything stays kind of default here. Um, you want uh, pre-multiplied matted, and if you've added music, basically you just add it, you add the song to your uh, media bin, you drag it in like a regular layer, and then you position it and RAM preview to hear if it sounds about right, all that good stuff. But uh, I didn't put music on mine, so I'll just leave it auto. It'll turn it off if there is no music in my composition, which in my case there isn't, so I don't have to worry about it. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. This um, render settings should actually be where they need to be. Um, best, full, yeah, all that good stuff. 60 FPS, all that good stuff. It should be where it should be, so you don't have to worry about it. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and change my output location and uh, start rendering. And I'll see you guys at the end of the render. All right, guys, so I've gone ahead and rendered it. And uh, here we go. This is our, uh, I think, uh, two to three second video that is almost a full gigabyte. So it is insane, I know, but uh, I, th I think it's totally worth it. So <laughs> anyways, let's go ahead and bring it over to our editing programs. I've got uh, Premiere Pro open right here. If you guys are wondering how I group these taskbar items, it's a, it's a nifty program called Bins. Really helpful, I like it. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, drag our video clip of our intro in here and uh, you see that it goes right into our media bin let me go over here to my second monitor and just uh, pull up a nice little um, video that I can use in the background so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a nice survival games video that I recorded in Minecraft uh, let's go ahead and grab I don't know maybe I'll give you guys this quick preview of a future video spoiler alert anyways I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create a new composition by dragging over the new composition button thing or actually it's a sequence we're working in premiere pro uh pretty much the same thing but premiere pro is equivalent anyways we're gonna go ahead and uh, drag our overlay intro on top of it and you'll see that if we play it back actually it's gonna go really slow because um well it's it's a gigabyte compressed down to a few seconds so you can imagine the insane data rates that are trying to be processed by a computer um so it's kind of insane so it will not play smoothly when you try to play it back so i'm just going to go frame by frame kind of show you guys here it is working in action on top of our video and of course you can do more with it like i did with my overlay intro but this is just the bare bones and i want to show you guys how the actual workflow is done you can get creative and down and dirty with all the animation stuff but uh, this is the basic stuff and you'll see that just playing it back frame by frame it does what it needs to do and once you render it out it'll play smoothly it's just previewing it in real time in the editing program will be quite the hassle unless you have like a mega computer so that's how you do it in premiere pro it's actually a lot simpler than a lot of people make it out to be um and i i, I think that it's just a really 
really great um, tool and I'm glad that Premiere Pro supports it by default. Anyways, let's go over and uh, go to Sony Vegas and do the same thing. So I'm gonna drag in my video clip here. And I actually haven't worked in Premiere Pro in a long time, so things may get funky here because I haven't used it. Um, I'm gonna have to use a quick refresher on how this I think program actually works. <laughs> mm, okay, I think I figured it out. Anyways, what we're gonna have to do is uh, we're actually gonna have to add a new video track right above. And then what we do is we drag it in and it should play back normally. If it does not, I think I uh, I know why. All right, so let's go play it frame by frame. Nope, it's got a black background. All right, so what we have to do to uh, fix this is basically you right click the clip, you go to properties, media, and then in, under the alpha channel selection, you go to, I think it is the same thing we chose in After Effects, which is pre-multiplied. Um, yep, that worked. I actually thought it was the other one when it didn't update there for a second. But you'll see that the transparent, transparent pixels are now being shown and uh, all inside of Sony Vegas, which is really, really nice. I'm going to go ahead and play it back here frame by frame just so you can see that it's basically the same thing. Um, there we go. It doesn't have much of a... Oop. I, I think I might have actually cut the beginning off. Yeah, I cut the beginning off. Uh, let's go ahead and fix that. Oh, got it extended all the way. All right, so something like that. I don't know what I actually did with the clip. I think I cut the beginning off, but uh, you get the point. It's being shown. And uh, yeah, it uh, fades out there at the end. Actually, I'm skipping more than the frame at a given time. So I'm going to go ahead and try to play it. It might be slow, but we'll see what happens. All right, it actually worked. I, I don't know what I was doing because my mouth noise is there in the actual video, but uh, whatever. <laughs> um, but uh, you'll see that's how you do it in both of those programs. I'm sure, sure it's possible in lots of different editors, but uh, that's not, I'm not gonna go showing how to do this in like 12 different editing programs. That would just be absurd. But these are the two most popular editing programs that I know of so far. So I just wanted to go ahead and show you guys how to do that in both of these. Um, I do use Premiere Pro for my videos, so I just wanted to put that out there before you guys ask in the comments, but uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so, 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 so much for watching. Um, if this tutorial helped you out, make sure to share it with um, all your loved ones. Share it with your dog, your grandma, your mother, your uh, your younger sister, and uh, heck, why not share it with that one weird kid at school? Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I, I really hope that this helps a lot of people. So if you know someone that's in need of making an overlay intro, share this video with them. I'm, I'm sure share, uh, spreading the love will be greatly appreciated on both parties. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and plug my uh, my graphics store here real quick. So if you uh, are uh, like, I don't know, allergic to that, please leave. Um, pretty much I have my own graphic design website. Pretty much what you do is go and look at some of the designs. If you uh, like one, you can go ahead and customize it. You can change your name, the color of it. You can change subtitles. Um, you can add your own Cinema 4D render character to it. And it is all rendered and sent to you within 30 minutes of your order. And that's intros, uh, outros, banners, all that good stuff. And um, you'll have it in your little hot hands in 30 minutes. So I'm really proud of my uh, store and website and all that. So if you want to go check it out, it's uh, gfx.thegarde.com. And um, yeah, go check it out if you're in need of any of those things. But with that said, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Peace.